Well, back to a coin shooting site now, and I'm using two machines. I'm going to try and dig at least 100 holes, and we'll see what turns up. It's been fairly hard going up there as of late. There's been a hell of a lot of ring pulls coming up. I could, of course, just ignore those ring pull signals, but as you saw in, oh, I think, the five or six videos back, it was entitled Gold, Silver and a Satanic Goat. I dug all the ring pull signals on that day and I found a gold ring. So from now on, every single ring pull signal is getting dug. If in doubt, dig it out. Well, that's the first 20 holes dug for a sum total of one penny. It's an old one. One pre-decimal penny and a 20 pence piece and a pocket full of trash. This one was reading a solid 90 on the Deus. Very good. And I think 12, what was it, 12.38, maybe 12.40 on the E-Track. And in here we've got a George V penny from 1919. That's the second lot of 20 pegs out. So I'm going to give them a dig and we'll see what turns up with this one. I actually forgot to mention the first lot of 20 digs that I had threw up a coin ball. I'm going to leave the coin balls until the end and then I'm going to crack them open and see what's there so it's like one final surprise. Down approximately 8 inches there and there seems to be some bit of green. May not be a coin, it looks more like a buckle. <laughs> the green's off something much higher up. It's actually the plate off a door where the key goes. Tiny little coin ball from about bleh, five, six inches. This is actually a target that I found and it looks like a coin ball and this was found walking between the markers. So I'd missed this one even with two detectors. And I think it's a coin ball. So we'll save that one till later. Well, that's another 20 pegs out. Most of these ones seem like very poor signals. I think the majority of them will be ring pulls, but you never know. The most, on the Dios, they're mostly reading between 65 and 70, possibly down into the late 50s. And on the E-Track, they're pretty much hitting the middle of the screen. So I think most of them are rubbish. That last dig, which I think was my second lot of pegs that I put out, got a couple of coin balls, I think a modern five pence, and a lot of trash. Well, that's the third lot of 20 pegs all dug up. And my suspicions were right. Absolute rubbish. Every single one was a ring pull or a small piece of lead. Nothing good in them at all. And bear in mind when I say I'm putting 20 pegs out, I'm probably digging nearer 23, 24, possibly 25 holes because I'm going round with the Deus just to check that I'm digging the right place even though I've got a peg in and I'm finding other things as well. So if I say 60, it's probably nearer 70, 75 holes that I've dug so far. And I've got loads of ring pulls, two modern coins, and I think I've got five coin balls. So that's not a very good return. I'm going to go into a different part of the field, which is well away from all of these ring pulls and everything. There will be good stuff here, 
but I can find that another day. I want to get a little bit away, possibly into some older stuff and away from all this trash. That's another 20 out. They're a lot more spread out this time because I'm away from where all the trash is. But I would say 75% of the signals that I've marked out probably are ring pulls as well. Some of them I'm reasonably hopeful of because on the Deus they're reading mid 70s and on the A track they're reading kind of 1230, 1233 to 1235. Might be something good, but. I'm not holding my breath. Well, I think I had about 30 digs there whilst collecting those markers in for one modern 10 pence. All the rest, ring pulls, and there was a piece of lead out of about 30 holes. So it's a very trashy sight. Well, that's all 20 markers out again. So I think that makes it 100 markers I've put out so far. Um, I've still only got about three modern coins and five coin balls but behind me there it's a little bit further away from the main house and there seems to be some better signals certainly there's probably about five or six that are reading in the 80s for the Deus and how does that correspond to the e-track 1238 1240 1242 it's reading in the right part of the screen and it's making the right noises on the e-track and it's making the right noises and giving the right numbers on the Deus for five or six of the signals so I'm hoping that there's at least five or six coins amongst these ones but we'll find out today is very very hard going but at least we've got a coin here oh that's in good condition 1952 ship half penny oh it's scabby on that side uh, 52, that'll be George the Sixth. Yes, George the Sixth. And upon closer inspection, we've also got another coin ball, but I'm going to save that till the end. So I'm about halfway through my markers now, and that's the first coin that I've hit out of the 20 markers that I put out. Well, I suppose if this is a coin, it was two in the same hole. So that's one for ten so far. And out of the muck that I was scraping back into the hole, we've got yet another coin ball, and that looks like an old penny. So that's getting saved till the end as well. So that was three coins in that same hole. Another little coin ball for the collection. Be very careful, I don't want to break it open just yet. Now some of you may have noticed these trees behind me in a few of the shots. These are planted in... 1864 or 1865 I think by the people who originally lived in this mansion so they've been in about 150 years I would say they're probably around about a hundred feet now these ones behind me but the main ones going down the drive the big ones are much bigger they've got massive girths on them they're just a really striking feature you can see these from 10-15 miles away because they really stand out on the skyline
there's a hell of a cluster behind me. I'm not quite sure how well that's going to come out on the video, but hopefully you'll be able to see a good cluster of markers behind me. That's just how many good signals there is in that particular place. And I thought that I'd hammered this site. This particular spot must be a bit that I've missed because all the rest of the markers on the rest of the site that I've done today have been pretty well spread out. These ones are clustered, so I'm hoping that there's a lot of coins that I've missed on previous visits hiding underneath those bits of white pipe. Get in there, we've got another coin ball. Oh yeah, there's another one. Yet another coin ball. That one was sitting in here, fell out probably about five, six inches deep. It's reading quite high on the DS as well, it's reading early 90s, which is a good sign. It's quite a tricky signal though. On the E-Track it absolutely slammed it. And I forget what the reading was, maybe it's 12.35. So I'm very hopeful for that one. Oh, that's a nice big coin ball. Awesome. Hopefully there's something good in that. It's reading 88 on the Deus. I think this was another one reading 12.35 to 12.36 on the E-Track. How hot does it want to be today? I've put out 120 markers during this video and therefore I've dug at least 120 holes. Because I was walking around with the Deus just to double check the targets as I was digging them uh, and to speed the recovery up a little bit because sometimes they were in the turf that I flipped over. I've probably dug nearer 140, 150 holes because as I was going from marker to marker, I was using the Deus. So not only was I dueling detectors locating targets, between digs I was detecting as well. So there's a lot of digging going on. Uh, I think before I crack open these coin balls, I'll show you the trash that I've dug. Oh God. <laughs> Look at that. That's just some of it. There's probably another handful in my finds pouch, so there's a lot of rubbish in this ground. Well, there's less rubbish in the ground now. So what about the coinage? Well, a little bracelet thing here, just made of copper, knackered. Modern 10 pence, modern halfpenny, three modern 20 pences, a halfpenny, a penny, and two five pences. So those coin finds aren't exactly setting the world alight, but hopefully there's at least one decent coin in the coin balls. Oop. Well that one's just broken open, and that one is... Oh, it's quite a late one. I don't think I found such a late half crown. That's a Elizabeth II half crown. Manky colour, of course, because it's after 1947. Anything after 47 that pre-47 would have been silver is made of crap. Cooper and nickel. Once it's been in the ground a few years, it goes orange like that. So if you see anybody digging anything after 1947, like a half crown, a crown, and it comes up bright silver, it's fake nonsense. <laughs> Absolute nonsense. And I have seen them. I've seen quite a few of them actually, recently. That's how they come up. Still a decent find. I'll just show you the imprint from that as well. Hopefully that'll focus, but that's a lovely imprint. That's the sort of thing that you can't fake. That takes time to develop. Actually, anybody wondering what all this soil is, it's not that I've made a mess when I've been digging things out. This place is littered with mole hills. So here's a little coin ball. Yes, as I suspected, modern penny. This is possibly another modern penny. Yes, 
Yes, it is indeed. I'm going to open all the little ones first because they are generally pennies or half pennies. So how many coin balls have I got? I've just opened one, two, three, and I've got seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen coin balls. That's pretty good for somewhere between 130 and 150 digs. It's not bad. Ah, another modern penny. This is possibly a half penny, this one, it's so small. And that wasn't a bad guess. Modern half penny. Another modern half penny. Not doing very well. <laughs> I do like the fact that it's a surprise though. It's really compacted soil. Oh, and the, really there could be anything in. There could be anything from a threepenny bit to a sixpence. Possibly a shilling. I think I've had shillings in coin balls. Mostly it's copper coins though. And there's another half penny. This is quite a big one. I'm hoping this is a half penny. An old one. Ah. Oh, a huge ball around that. Another modern half penny. God, that's a fourth one of them so far. This is the last coin ball that I dug. That's why it's still black. It's still got a bit of moisture in it. Oh, man. That was a lovely big ball for a modern penny. <sighs> this one's got to be good. Modern penny. God, apart from that first one, all I've had is pennies and half pennies. And this one probably won't be anything better. Oh. Get in there. It's not the last one I opened, but it's nearly the last one I opened. And it's a 1929 sixpence. From George V. And that's in pretty good condition, so I'm very, very pleased with that. That makes the hunt worthwhile. But there's time for more yet. It's quite a nice old penny. From... I think 1948. And that's a George the Sixth. in pretty good condition. So that huge penny was in quite a small coin ball and the big coin balls have been yielding tiny little pennies. This one's somewhere in between so this could be anything. Ah, ah there you go. That's the first one of those I've had today. Threepenny bit from George the Sixth. That's from way over a hundred digs. Somewhere between 120 and 150. Good range of coins there. No Victorian though. It's all George V, George VI and Elizabeth II. So only three monarchs but a wide range of different coins. Including the little silver. Well, that technique produced the goods again. It's not to say I wouldn't have found most of those coins using a single detector, but using the two detectors really does make use of the strengths of both of the detectors. Uh, it worked really well. That wasn't a bad return. I think it's probably roughly one coin for every ten holes dug, which is okay. That's not bad, uh, considering it is, I would kind of class it as a coin shooting site, but it's a very contaminated coin shooting site with it being quite a late one. There's a lot of ring pulls in there. If you can get one before the Second World War, there's a hell of a lot less trash in the ground. And I'm really on the outlook for another good coin shooting site because this one, whilst it still produces the goods, is pretty hard going. 
just want to give a big thank you to everybody that watches the videos, everyone that clicks like and everyone who subscribes. I realise from watching other people's videos that I hardly ever ask people to subscribe. Well, <laughs> some are begging for subscribers, even when they've got tens of thousands. I never seem to do that. I'm hopeless at promoting myself. I tend to concentrate on just getting the videos done, promoting other channels without promoting myself. So if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed, uh, and this will be a rare thing coming from my lips, but please subscribe. And talking of my failure as far as self-promotion goes, I actually do have a Facebook page. And those of you who know me know I'm hardly ever on Facebook. But I have got a Facebook page page which is titled Pond Guru and although I don't get into like conversations and all that on there because I prefer to do that either on the phone or on YouTube or in person I do post things on there from time to time so you might want to swing by there and check that out I don't know whether you click follow or like or what it is on Facebook I don't know I think it's like you like this page follow might be Twitter I'm not on Twitter I don't think it's subscribe to this page I'm not sure. I might have, I don't know, two or three hundred followers or subscribers or likers or whatever on there. I don't know. But if you want to swing by there and click thumbs up or like or follow us, whatever it is on Facebook, be my guest. Thanks very much for watching. There you go. Look at the size of these buggers. Absolutely massive. Massive. Humongous. And the beauty of it is, they've got really soft bark. So sometimes when I'm driving through here with the kids, we get out and they start punching the bark. Not that soft. I could hear the Deus constantly chattering away, which it doesn't normally do. You normally get a little bit of chatter, but on this particular day, there was a bit more. Don't know whether it was atmospheric conditions or interference between the two machines, but the E-Track seemed to do a lot better. Don't know what was up with the Deus. Maybe it didn't like being paired with an American machine. I could kind of hear it going, you American, yeah. You disgust me, a fat in your general direction. I think I'll cut that bit out. <laughs>